The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Dario Fountain Roli, computer science teacher. We are in Form 5 studying introduction to database to databases. Let us start by correcting the assignment of the previous lesson. One, we asked to identify the types of dependencies that exist in the relation below. So we have the relation, this relation, and we are asked to identify the type of dependencies that exist. We notice in this relation that we have student code as the first field, student subject code as the second, subject name and subject coefficient. In the relation, we see that subject code cannot be used as primary key. Neither can we can we see that student code cannot be used as the primary key. Neither the subject code can be used as the primary key because each of those fields cannot uniquely identify a record. But Combining both records, uh, but combining both fields, as combining both fields, as the student field and the subject code, student code and subject code, we will obtain a composite key which can be used to uniquely identify each record. In the relation, we have subject name and subject coefficient which are dependent on subject code and subject code is one field of the composite key so we from from here we notice that there is a partial dependency between the subject name the subject coefficient and the subject code we also have the second type of dependency, which is the multivalued dependency. That is for each student code, we have a subject code, a subject name, and subject coefficient. So we have the first type of dependency, partial, as the attribute subject name and subject coefficient are partially dependent only on subject code and we can denote as we see subject code determines subject name subject code determines subject coefficient we also have the multivalued dependency where student code multivalued determines the subject code the subject name and the subject coefficient and we denote it student code multivalue determines subject code, subject name, and subject coefficient. In the second question, we are asked to identify cases of redundancies in the table below. So 
So we have this table and we're asked to identify cases of redundancies. So as you recall, redundancy is the appearance of multiple copies of same data in different parts of the table. So we have the first part, the first case of redundancy we have is 0, 1, 2, 3, which repeats itself three times. Okay. 0, 4, 5, 6, we have the math, that's the subject code, and we have on subject name, mathematics, and mathematics, which repeats itself. So those are the different cases of redundancies in the table. We're also asked, still on this table, to identify cases of data inconsistencies. So data inconsistency, meaning having the same piece of data located in different parts of the table, but having different values. So the first case of inconsistency is that of the record math. So we have math, mathematics with coefficient 10, but on the second, we have math, mathematics with coefficient 5. We have the second case of inconsistency on the record chemistry with the code chem and the subject name chemistry, coefficient 3. On the other, we have chem as the subject code, but as a subject name, we notice there is an E missing between H and M. So we have data inconsistency in the table. So those are the different cases of data inconsistency. After having corrected the assignment, let us move to our lesson of today, which is on database normalization two. Our lesson will unfold as follows. We have the objectives, previous knowledge, real life application of database normalization, presentation of concepts, some exercises, and assignment, which you will do as you revise this lesson. After following this lesson, you'll be able to state the different norm, you'll be able to state the different normal forms, give the requirements of the first three normal forms, and be able to normalize a table up to the third normal form. In order to better understand this lesson, previous knowledge on concepts of relations, keys, and relationships, as well as concept of data redundancy, data dependency, and the goal of normalization will be of great help. Let us consider the real life application with the following situation. The principal of SBC needs an information system that uses a database system to manage the school. You are required to apply the techniques of normalization to obtain an efficient relational database model with tables normalized up to the third normal form. During database design, it is important to have it is important to have the right attributes in the right tables. This can be easily achieved through the techniques of normalization. Normalization consists of transforming database tables from one form or one normal form to another. A normal form refers to the levels of database normalization. Normal forms are used to eliminate or reduce redundancy in database tables. Normal forms are classified from the least normalized to the most 
normalized form. Normalization therefore involves living from one normal form to another. We have normalization rules which are divided into number of number of normal forms. The normal forms include we have the first normal form, the second normal form, and the third normal form. Let us take the first case, which is the first normal form. A relation is said to be in the first normal form if it has atomic data values. So when we talk of atomic data values, it means that each value in a field cannot be split into a smaller unit. Values stored in every column are of the same domain. So in every field, the data stored in every field should be of the same domain. For example, if we have the field name, we should not have in a particular field, in a particular area of, the, of that field, a name maybe with, with numbers, with integers, or a number with different characters from text. So when we talk of values in every column belonging to the same domain, we mean that every values of that attribute should have the same domain. So if you have that field name, all names should have the domain text, for example. So you should not have some names having different domain. All the columns in a table having unique names. So in a table, you should not have some fields having the same names. All fields in a table should have different names. So all columns in a table should have unique names. And the order in which data is stored does not matter. So in the first normal form, the order in which data is stored does not matter. Let us consider the student table below. We have three fields, as the first roll number, name, and subject. We need to change the, we need to put this field in first normal form. So we need to first identify if there are non-atomic fields. And of course, we have found that there are fields with non-atomic values, such as the subject where we have OS and CN, and we also have a field having C and C++. So we, we notice that we need to remove all those non-atomic values and place them on new lines that create new records having those values. So we do something like this, we transform into the first normal form by creating another record having the same roll number, the same name, but having now only an atomic value of the first field. So here we have OS, which remains, and we still create that is a different record now using CN. So we do that for all the records having known atomic values. Now we have the second type of normalization, which is the second normal form. A relation is said to be in the second normal form if it is in the first normal form. And if it has no partial dependency. So when we talk of partial dependency, what comes into your mind must be a composite key. So we have a composite key and some non-key fields which depend on one field of composite key. So in a second normal form, we should not have partial dependencies. Let us consider the table below. We have the fields, order number, item code, description, order quantity, and unit price. 
We notice here that there is there is a composite key that is order num order number and item code. So the combination of these two fields will form a composite key that will uniquely identify each record. But description and unit price, the value of description and unit price can be gotten from item code. So in a second normal form, we don't need to have fields which depend on one field of the composite key. So to convert or transform the table into a second normal form, we copy the values or the fields which are partially dependent on the composite key, that's on one field of the composite key, and put it in a different table. So we copy the unit price and the description with the item code and put it on a separate table, leaving in the first table only the order number, the item code, and the order quantity. So in this first field, it is already in the first normal form because we have no fields which have the same names. We have no non-atomic keys or values. And now it is also in the second normal form because here we have no partial dependencies. So we will see that these two tables are in the second normal form. The third type of normalization is the third normal form. A relation is said to be in the third normal form if it is first in the second normal form and it has no transitive dependency. So when we talk of transitive dependency, we mean a known key field depending on the value of a known key field which can be obtained from a known key field also. So when we talk of transitive dependency, we can get the value of a known key field from another known key field. So to obtain a relation in a third normal form, we need to have no known key dependencies in the relation, and we need to be already in the second normal form. Let us consider the online order table below. Here, we notice that we have one, two, three, four, five fields as order number, customer ID, delivery address, telephone, and the order date. Order number, and we have order number, which is the primary key. But telephone and delivery address can be gotten as the values of delivery address and the telephone can be gotten from the customer ID. Also, we can have order date and the customer ID if we have the order number. So we notice here that there is a transitive dependency between the order date, which is gotten from here, that between the telephone, the telephone and the delivery address, as which are dependent on customer ID and customer ID, which is dependent on the order number. So here is a transitive dependency. So to put it in the third normal form, we need to create a table having the customer ID, the delivery address, and detail. We have another table having the order number, the customer ID, and the order date. So we have the first table having the order number, the customer ID, and the order date. And the second table, we have the customer ID, the delivery address, and the telephone number. Let us do the following exercises to better understand the concept of 
a lesson. One, briefly explain the main requirements for a table to be in each of the following normal forms. A, the first normal form. B, the second normal form. And C, the third normal form. Consider the table below. So we consider this table below. We have student ID, subject ID, student name, subject name, the grade, the class, and the class master. A. Briefly explain why the table is not in the first normal form. Hence, move the table to the first normal form. B. State whether the resulting table or tables is or are in the second normal form. If no, move the table to the second normal form. And C. Identify any known key dependencies in the resulting tables. Let us start with the first question, where we're asked to give the main requirements for a table to be in the first normal form. For a table to be in the first normal form, the table should have atomic values. So each value should be atomic, that is, it should not be, that it should be a value which cannot, which can no longer or no further be split. That is, every row or column combination should store a single data value. The second was to give the main requirements for a table to be in the second normal form. So for a table to be in the second normal form, we need to ensure that that table is first of all in the first normal form and secondly has no partial dependencies. The last was to, that's to give the main requirements for a table to be in the third normal form. For a table to be in the third normal form, the table should first of all be in the second normal form and should have no transitive dependencies. So it should have no transitive dependencies. So no known key attribute should depend on known key attribute. In the second question, we're asked to consider the table where we have the student ID, the subject ID, the student name, subject name, the grade, the class, and class master. So we should look at the table keenly and say if the table is in the first normal form or not. If not, we move it to the first normal form. So, briefly explain why the table is not in the first normal form. Hence, move the table to the first normal form. The fields from the table, we notice the fields subject ID, subject name, and grade contain non-atomic data values. So, the table is not in the first normal form. So, from the table, we found under the, uh, under the Subject name, we saw some subjects in some fields having two values. So we should not have that. Those are non-atomic values. So to convert that table to the first normal form, all the non-atomic values or non-atomic fields should be moved to new records. So we create new records where we had mathematics computing, so we, we have created a new record having only computing with its great class and class master. So we do that for all the fields where we have non-atomic values. The second part of the question were to state whether the resulting table or tables is or are in the second normal form. If no, we move the table to the second normal form. So this table we have found, we are, we are asked to state whether it is in the second normal form. If no, 
we move it to the second normal form. So the resulting table has partial dependencies. So when you look at the resulting table, that's the first, the table of the first normal form, we notice that you can get the student name from the student ID. And the student ID is, is a field from a composite key. So that leads to a partial dependency. So we also have the subject name, class, and class master, which can be identified by the subject ID. So the table is not in the second normal form. So how do we proceed putting the table into the second normal form? To proceed, we move student name and a copy of student ID to a separate table. Then we move the subject name, the class, the class master, and a copy of subject ID to a separate table. So we have a resulting table. We have three tables. The first table having student ID and the student name. The second table having the subject ID, the subject name, the class and the class master. And the last table having the student ID, the subject ID, and the grade. So now all these tables are set to be in the second normal form. We are also asked to identify any known key dependencies in the resulting tables. So known key dependencies, we are talking of a transitive dependency. So we notice from the relation that class master, if you have the class, you can have the class master. So that's a non-key dependency because class is not the primary key of this relation. And class is functionally dependent on subject ID. So we have transitive dependency that's subject ID depends or determines class and class determines class master. That's a non-key dependency. So to move that to the third normal form, we create a fourth table where we have that where we move class and class master to a new table. So here I will remove class master from here, meaning we have no transitive dependence and hence we will say our four tables are in the third normal form. I will invite you to do the following exercises as you revise this lesson. The table below shows information about the grades obtained by students in different subjects. Study the table, answer, study the table and answer the following questions. So you observe this table and you answer the questions that follow. Identify any case of data redundancy. That's one. Two, identify any case of data inconsistency. Three, briefly explain why the table is not in the first normal form. Hence, move the table to the first normal form. Four, state whether the resulting table or tables is or are in the second normal form form. If no, move the table to the second normal form. And five, identify any known key dependencies in the resulting table or tables. Hence, move the tables in the third normal form. In order to build this lesson, resources from the above references were used. Our next lesson will be on implementing databases one.